Yeah, g'day. I'm Steve Coston, and I'm the inventor of the Coston Horseshoe. When you fit the shoe, you get the right width. You measure from this side to this side of the foot, and then you find a shoe to match it. Usually, I like to go a tad bigger than smaller. Dress the foot and find a shoe that is the same size or a tad bigger. So if you're going to dress anything after you finish shoeing it, dress the shoe, not the foot. It is very easy to fit. It has two little fitting clips at the back, which are just there for holding the, clipping the foot on, shoe on and holding it in position. You can mark the centers of your clip. And then all I do, just, just three little tiny cutouts. Little clip. So once you've clipped it on your foot, it holds it in position so you can put your nails in. Take them off when you're finished. You've got the option of two side clips. You've got the option of cutting them off, having a toe clip, or cut the toe clip off and have the side clips. The nail fits in and it actually fits flush with the top of the shoe. Sit up like a, a steel shoe, like you'd have a, maybe two mil out the top of a steel shoe. This one here is designed to be flush. I know some people think that you need them to be countersunk. Well, what we've done, if you want to countersink your nail, just put a, a smaller headed nail in it. Uh, I've used the BH4 or anything like that. You can countersink it down in and works just as fine. With the cost and shoe on the back feet, sometimes if they're doing a lot of work, um, turning and stopping and carrying on, I like to leave all three clips on. It just gives it a little bit more, a little bit more hold on the foot and I haven't had any troubles with them. So same, same deal. Measure the width, make sure it's the right width. Mark the center, mark your toe, and you can mark the other side. Same deal, don't go digging heaps of hoof out. Just, just three little tiny, three little tiny cutouts. Okay, now we've, we've nailed it on. All we do is, you can just do your clenches up. I'm just going to make a quick hit. Like I said, the secret is get the right shoe for the right foot. So, again, don't have your nails coming out here and here. Make sure they're just at, at the right height. With this shoe, I'm finding I can do a nice job, the horses are happier, and I can get in and out of there and do three full shoeings more in the same time. You don't have to have a, a ton of gear. I don't have to take my forge. I don't have to take my, my, my steel. I don't have to take any of that stuff. All I need is the plastic shoes, my shoeing gear, and a stand. If you want to use the side clips, if you want to put, a say, a, a squared toe, you can just cut the toe clip off, use the side clips, and square the toe off. It's as easy as that. And you can actually do that while it's on the horse. It has a, an injection hole. And what I use is a glue gun and I squirt this injection gel under the shoe. So what it does, it fills up all the voids under your shoe so you get the perfect fitting horseshoe. It's, and what it does do, and also it allows the foot to set comfortably, the sole to set comfortably on a gel, on a nice soft cushion. So that way when the horse walks and moves, he hasn't, doesn't have to stretch to touch the ground. He only has to move up and down cushion all the time. If you need a shoe that is full here, well, put a shoe on that's big. Put a shoe on that fits those parts that you're talking about. You can cut this stuff off. It, it's not like you got, you're stuck with this size. If, if you think you, if your horse is a bit bold, you're a bit, bit fuller in the toe, which it probably won't be. I haven't had a lot that are fuller, but if you have, put a bit bigger shoe on. It is a fuller shoe. And then just cut the excess off. <laughs>